Welcome to Dot 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 Practice, where I write, read, and talk about all sorts of creative things. In this installment, I will be talking about Woman of the Hour. A link to the text lives in the description, and here we go. Oh my god, where are we? In these essays, I really don't want to just give you a breakdown of a movie. You can do that on your own. What I do want to do is figure out where the psychology lies. It can be in a specific character, in the sets, the color design, the music. Any aspect of a film can contain it. My goal is to find it and report my findings to you. I'm talking about soul. Okay. <laughs> Before I get into where the psychology is or isn't, as the case may be in this movie, I do want to address some miscellaneous production notes that occurred to me as I watched Woman of the Hour. It is Anna Kendrick's directorial debut. It is the story of the sadistic serial rapist and killer Rodney Alcala, whose claim to fame as far as this movie is concerned and what the media latched onto at the time this all happened was going on a dating show. Bachelor number one, this is nice and easy. What are girls for? In the movie, they use the device of timeline mixing to show the serial killer's progression. However, since the actor looks and dresses exactly the same from one year to the next, we really can tell when we are, and I'm not so sure that that worked. The shots of the actual killings are very close up, almost porn-like, while the shots of the landscapes where the crimes took place are wide, like they're a silent witness. And I thought that worked really well. Anna Kendrick is stiff and not in the I meant to do that because that's what my character wanted way. She's just not very good. Bachelor number two, I think you answered my question. Uh, hey, wait, no, I, I didn't mean it like Moving that. Moving on. The best acting, however, goes to the Costa Rican Daniel Zavato, outshining everyone else, including Tony Hale. Oh. A little hard on the boys, aren't you, Cheryl? Oh, I think we're all having fun. <laughs> of course we are. And I do think Anna Kendrick has quite the future as a director. She made some excellent choices. It's a very good answer. Oh yeah, we love that. So, where is the psychology found in this movie? The dating show part of the story, and therefore Anna Kendrick's character, are a red herring, though they take up almost all of the movie. The only thing this accomplishes is to distract us from the horror that was Rodney Alcala and the actual meat of the story, which is the women victims versus a system that ignores them and the extreme misogyny of the 1970s and beyond, let's be honest. There are two super quick scenes where they kind of address the meat that I speak of. I wonder if you can spot them. Shout them out in the comments if you think you know them. I'll give you a hint, they occur in the final act. Nevertheless, the writer chose to focus on the much glamorized TV show incident, thus giving in to the popular appetite for fetishizing serial killers instead of telling a deep and meaningful story. The title, however, does succeed in conveying the psychology of the story. On the surface level, a woman of the hour seems to be referring to the woman who went on the dating show and selected the serial killer. But on a deeper level, a woman of the hour is referring to all of the women and girls that Rodney raped, tortured, and killed, each one as unimportant as the next, only around long enough to satisfy his sadistic cravings. So each one was a woman of the hour to him. What are girls for? I guess I'd have to say that that's up to the girl. Overall, this is a dead movie and not because it has a serial killer in it and gratuitous killing scenes. It's dead because it misses the mark on the title it promises but never delivers. How do you feel right now? Fine. Thanks so much for watching. I really want to delve deeper into these reviews with trying to find where the psychology lies in the stories. And each production is going to be completely different because who makes the movie 
who, who writes the movie, who acts in the movie, how it's produced really helps determine where the psychology actually lies. And it may not be where you might automatically assume on the surface level. So I intend to make more of these videos and I'd love to hear your thoughts about this particular review. Um, have you seen the movie? Do you agree, disagree? Have you considered looking at it from this particular angle? And um, thank you so much for tuning in and I will see you on the next one.